We are here at Air Venture Oshkosh, getting toward the end of the show. And before the show went over, we had to get down here, look at an airplane that lots of people have come up to me and said, you got to go look at this thing closely. So we're going to do that for the benefit of all the viewers. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking today with Randall Fishman. He's like the original electric guy in light aviation in the United States, maybe the world. And uh, we are very appreciative of all the work you've done for many years. This is just another one now. So we want to look more closely into this airplane that we've been hearing so much about all week. And Randall, you've uh, practically pioneered the field of electric aircraft. There's some other people doing it. That's great too. I'm sure you embrace that. But you really kind of started the ball game with yeah, electric airplanes. Got it rolling. What, five or six years ago here, I think it was the first time I ran yeah. into you with electric on a trike then. Right. You've done several other variations. This one is the newest I've seen. Right. And I love it because it's a single place. I like single place airplanes. Me too. And they're just kind of fun. You don't have to please anybody but yourself and mother safety, I guess. But So show me what all we've got here. This is your new bird. What do you call on this one, Randall? Uh, Electroflyer ULS for ultralight soaring. Uh, it's actually ultralight specification. It's 245 pounds. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, does that include the batteries? No, nope, that's plus the batteries. Okay. Uh, I was just talking, uh, you know, I'm on the ASTM committee. Yes, right. And I was talking to the FAA guys over there, and they're talking about kind of a long-range thing for uh, light support, it seems like. But I said, well, what about ultralight? Uh, I, I would like to get an exemption uh, for having batteries instead of... What did of, they say to that? They looked at each other and said, I don't see any reason that would be a problem. And uh, I believe it's because it's a different... Uh, uh, for ultralights, it's a lot less of a danger. There's nobody depending on you in a second seat. Ultralight was always kind of a sporting right, uh, right. rule where it was your your own responsibility. Um, five gallons of gasoline is a lot more dangerous in a crash or something than a box full of batteries. Well, absolutely. And, you know, so there we got the equivalent. In the Part 103, just to make sure everybody understands what we're right. talking about here, 254 pounds is the maximum empty weight. That right. does not include fuel. You're allowed five gallons of fuel or 30 pounds, but you can't do that same thing here because batteries and gasoline have different energy density levels. That's right. That's some more arcane stuff that we don't need to talk about, but the fact of the matter is it's they limited the gallons to five because they didn't want you to go too far, basically. So let's review a little bit. We're right on the edge of the 30th anniversary of Part 103. I, That's a very cool thing. And you've got the hat on to prove it. There you go. I didn't even notice, but uh, it's a very neat thing. This is no pilot license, no aircraft registration, no airworthiness certificate, no medical can be built ready to fly and sold just as is. So this could be sold just as we're looking at it. Right. And uh, typically these prices are much more modest than the big heavy aircraft with all kinds of fancy equipment on them. But you know, this one doesn't leave anything to leave someone thinking, wow, this doesn't even look real. It looks very real. It's right. beautifully not, not smooth. And... Anything. So tell us a little bit more about the ULS now that we're looking at it. First of all, we got electric motor in the back. Right. I don't even see any batteries. Where are they? All right, the batteries, this was built, designed to be an electric aircraft, so we didn't have to just find the spot. Uh, we decided to put them you in... You designed kind of around the batteries, in a sense. Yeah, we yeah, decided okay. the battery should go in the wing roots. So that's this box right back here by my hand? Right, it's a stainless okay. steel box. And I see one on the other side as well, that the camera can't quite see. How Correct. far back in there does that go? It goes back 21 inches, 17 inches across, and 3 inches deep. That doesn't strike me as a lot of battery. Well, each side is 3.35 kilowatt hours, what I call my medium pack that I sell in okay. uh, the ultralight. And there's two of them. So you The got trick is we need 15,000 watts to take off. Okay. But we only need 3,000 watts to maintain. Oh, wow. It's 20%. Wow. So, it has, so once you're up, you're, right. you're not sucking so down much battery. So if you're using 3,000 watts and you've got 6,700 watts on tap, you got your two hours plus a little more for the takeoff and climb. You get legitimately two full hours of running. Okay, if you get two hours of flying out of these battery packs, which impressed me is quite small, that's roughly the equivalent in, let's say, uh, an original ultralight, whatever that term might mean, where you've got a gasoline engine and you've got five gallons of gas and you're burning at least two and a half an hour in most of those. You don't have any more flying time in those than this. Right. The issue with that was you had inefficient airframes, draggy airframes, and two cycle engines, had, everything was inefficient, but gasoline has such an amazing amount of energy in it, you still got two hours. <laughs> so here you had to be a little more efficient with the aircraft in order to do that same thing, because physically, 
the amount of volume that these batteries consume looks less to me than a five gallon volume of gasoline. I would think, Just in bulk, would think, not in weight. Yeah, I would think that it is. So what is the weight of the battery systems here? Uh, each side is 45 pounds for the full size pack. Uh, we are offering it uh, initially with the box is half full. So we'll okay. give you, uh, so that would be an hour of flying. An hour of flying. Okay. And, um, the guys who are interested in soaring, they want it that way. Sure, right. And All you want to do is get up, be right. able to shut it off. And a folding propeller for more oh, aerodynamic. Okay. You've had that originally on right, like the on first one I ever saw, right? So, uh, and an hour of runtime is way more than a glider pilot would need. He could fly home oh, from yeah. the soaring Goodness, site yes, you know, with plenty. the extra. So those and guys if you're just going to go out and drive it around, an hour is a nice flight at the end of the day or something like that. So but nothing wrong with that. If you mostly want to drive it around, you might as well get the full size pack because that's the size that it was made for. And that gives you the, the two hours plus. So when you make them the half size, what dimension changes? Uh, we leave the battery box the same size. Uh, it's made with... You just only fill it half full. Right. Okay. It's made with little channels to fit that box. Oh, okay. So this is a series of uh, just, cells it, then. That right, right, there. right. They, they're laid in there this way. Air comes in from the high pressure side of the wing, pressurizes this end of the box. Ah, so you're cooling the batteries all the while you fly. Now that's a kind of an important thing because we keep reading in the mainstream media about computer batteries and other stuff catching yeah, well, fire. You know, that was many years ago and that was actually mistaken manufacturing. You, when, uh, lately you never hear anything going wrong with computers or cell phones. That's just, true, that is kind of old news I'm It was actually a it. defect in those batteries, and ah. they recalled them all, remember Apple and everything? Yes, yes, right. Uh -huh. So the batteries themselves are really not dangerous, but you have to use them carefully. Uh, the guys who have How so? The guys who have trouble with them are the RC guys. They discharge them in six minutes or something. They have them inside the airplane in shrink wrap so they can't get rid of the heat and ah, there's no air okay. in it. They take them out and they're burning hot. And then they go ahead and charge them up because they want to fly again. <laughs> and then it's a very inexpensive you make charger. It even hotter, yeah. Right, it's a very inexpensive charger. Something will go wrong with the charger and they'll have a fire or something. But we discharge them over a period of two hours. That's what they're designed for. Right, it's a lower, what's it, uh, cycle? C rate. C rate, lower C rate, so you get many, many more cycles. Okay, so what is the cycles means a recharge. Yeah. And how many recharges are you seeing in, in this kind of battery? Uh, setup? We never got to to the point where we even you haven't pounded it yet. Uh, we're uh, calculating 600 re recharges on the medium pack and uh, 800 on the full pack. We don't know exactly what the number okay, is. Okay, so the two hour flying airplane, 800 re recycles, re 800 recharging of those batteries, that's 1600 hours of flying time. Did right, I do yeah, that right? I right. think I did that uh, right. Something like the average pilot, that's over 10 years. The shelf life on the batteries is only seven or eight years, so you're going to get. So seven. you're never going to you're never going to basically use it up. The right. cycle the cycle part of it you're never right. Gonna use so you get seven or eight years. Now, when they talk about the shelf life, after seven or eight years, the batteries are still not dead. They might only have. Can they be refurbished then? No, but they might only have fifty or sixty percent left. So okay. if you have a two-hour pack in seven years, you'll still be flying an hour on. Oh. Voltmeter on the panel. Okay. And you use it like a gas gauge. Okay, the volt meter is the equivalent of the gas gauge for all of right. us guys that are still trying to grapple with what so, instruments do I look at in this electric Right, so you're always, you're always seeing that. Uh, this goes from... And the volt meter goes down just like a... Well, this one's got a little digital one. Okay, so... So this has got... The number from, goes down. From 54 volts to 76 volts. 67 is the middle. So if you're over 67, you got more than half left. Okay, okay. Well, a lot of people want to know all about what we just talked about, so good. We got that out of the way now. Let's go back to the interesting part, the okay. airplane. Right. We got a way to get the wings off? Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's you have an off. access port here. Okay. You open that up. You got one pin that's, here that goes through the spar. Through the red handle there. You want that's to the correct. Red and then there's another one here. Normally, you put them on before the little seat back goes on. Ah, I see. Right okay. there. I see another red handle right. there. Also safety down, it looks like. It's got a little pin that's safe. Okay. Take the pins out. You slide it out. Two people slide it out? Two people. If you had one of those strap-on wheel cars, oh, yeah, right. you probably could like do it by yourself. Like all the sailplane guys probably have. Probably do yeah. it by yourself. Okay. Uh, and it only weighs about 40 pounds. Oh, okay. So you can put it on a little stand or on the ground on a cushion or something. Go so around. Now, the, the airplane, without one wing, still stays straight. Ah, because okay, that's it, a nice. Because the, the wheels are so far out. Oh, yeah. They're practically right, right here at right the right so that's great. So then you can go and do the other one whenever you have time to do it. You don't need another guy on the other side. Now, once it's off, it's six and a half feet wide. Okay, so that fit on any any trailer, go down no the road, problem. no problem. What I was, well, let's talk about how it flies. Um, first of all, it's flying qualities. Uh, 
how is it to fly? Is it like a sailplane? It's, it's like a sailplane, meaning that it's kind of rudder dominated, is it? Uh, not too much. No. Um, it's got these big flapper-ons. Ah, okay, long. so it's flapper-ons. I see. Very long. And they go out about uh, two-thirds span, I would say, something right. like that. They're they, pretty big. They start a little bit out and then they go... I guess yeah, so it's really probably out. about half span if you include the center section right, here or something. Being out At any rate, a way. large area. So, so the roll control is yeah, it works is it, very nicely. Is it pretty crisp? Yes, it's yeah? fine. Okay. And you know why it also because of the the inertia. It's so light. Ah, yeah. When you go to turn it, it doesn't have to start moving a big thing. There's nothing no weight out there. Yeah, that's true. That's a right. very good point, Randall, right. because it's one of the beauties of light airplanes. Is right. They just don't take some of the stuff that a big heavy airplane takes. That's correct. Yep. All right. So inside, we've got a regular joystick here. Right. But we've got a little knob in the center of the joystick. Come on, you know what that is. Take well, a guess. I'm guessing it's a throttle. Bingo! All right. Yeah, it's but it's it, not like a normal throttle. You just it's just kind of a thumb screw. Right. Thing here, it's just huh? a little potentiometer, and uh, you just roll. Your thumb's going to be right about there anyway. Uh huh. You right. Just roll it, and then uh, that's ah, it. Sure. No problem. And that's your throttle. Throttle. Brake. Brake. What do we got down here on the front? Trim. Trim. Excellent. It's uh, got a little piece of spring steel, and that puts you. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, what a nice, just, simple you can just system. Take, set it and We're familiar with seeing bungee cords. There's nothing wrong with that either, but this is a, a little bit slicker. Looks nicer, yeah. more durable, not going to wear out, that kind of thing. And over here, I see some controls. I see three knobs here, basically. Okay. A small one, and one you've got marked red, and one you've got marked blue. What are those about? Okay, the red is the flapper on. The little aluminum piece, that's just a lock for it. So you unlock it. I see, okay. Slide it back, you hear the click. Yep, yep. Oh, I see them moving there, yep. Right. And then while it's... Okay, so they got nice, nice little detents down right. here, too, then, so you can hear it and feel it when it gets to the right position. Right, so now that, that puts your flapper on down, and of course, because it's a flapper on, you still have use of your ailerons. Oh, I see, okay. Leave it in right. one position. Okay, okay, go ahead and... Now you still have your ailerons oh, yeah. starting okay. from the bias down position. Let me pull it all the way back and move that again. That's to make a high drag position if you want to come in steep. Okay, still got, it looks like you still got a lot of... Like that on the runway without floating along. and this light, right. uh, it's really going to float. Now one of the things I know that's kind of critical about where uh, where the uh, air brake or speed brake works is the location on the wing. This is something that usually requires. It's got to be in just the right spot to have the maximum effect. This uh, looks like it's pretty far aft to me. That speaks to me that the, of the wing's smoothness. Yeah, you want to interrupt it way back here. Yeah, and also the shape of the, all right, it right, doesn't separate way up here. Right. And also the shape of it, it's the high spot to be on that. Sense. It's a really lightweight airplane. That part's obvious. We've seen how it controls. I love the air inlet up here in the front. Right. Comes in here, goes up inside the canopy, exits out the back. You're right. still working on that a little more to tweak it a bit, you right. said, but gonna get even more air some really cool thinking here in a lot of ways. But the big question is, how'd you make it light enough to get in part 103? All right, well, that was the whole idea of the project, is we wanted to have a uh, electric motor glider that fit part 103. And we wanted it high performance, so we had to have the long wingspan. So the, we had to go with a little bit exotic uh, construction to get the weight. So I'm guessing carbon fiber is in the picture it's here. It's almost all carbon fiber and foam. Uh, we, they have very good laminators in the shop, very experienced guys, vacuum bagged. Uh, there's a little uh, Kevlar aramid fiber as well. I noticed that right away yeah, here. So. It, come, it came in at 245 pounds with the motor. The panel fully built, the cushions, the controller, all that stuff. Everything except the batteries. Right, 245. So, so we're nine pounds under. So you're well under the weight. And that is that with the little wheel pairings yeah. and everything? Yeah. So this is a much cleaner airplane. We've got some other neat little airplanes that are making part 103, right. but we are, um, uh, we're, you know, we, we don't usually see them quite this clean as we do this. So Clean and big span and low sink rate. It gets about 25 to one glide angle. Very soarable machine. and. Um, 1.2 meters per second sink, which is... Oh abetted. yeah, no, that's good number. That's abetted. So when can somebody, if they said, if we've had to chase people away here as we've done yeah. the video, yeah. which is cool, and I hope they'll all come back, but uh, uh, when can somebody get one of these? Clearly there's some interest in this. Yeah, we were ready to go. We've been working on the project for four years. I started with the designer four years ago, told him what I wanted, do you think you can do it? He came back with a design, didn't like it that much. We went with all composite. I told him I wanted a steerable nose wheel. Can you still make the 90 kilograms? <laughs> yeah, we, and uh, anyway, this is the third generation, or maybe even fourth generation, and it's finally exactly where I wanted it four years ago. 
so when if somebody says, Randall, I'm convinced, here's the money, here's all the money. 90 days delivered. 90 days, all right, that's ready quick. So. We're ready to go. The factory is all set up, all the modes are sitting there, the workers are there, we're ready to go. So end of 2012, no problem. People can oh, get yeah. aircraft from you. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for talking with Great. us today. Randall Fishman of electroflyer.com. Give us the full address. Was that the correct address? That's address. That's right. It's Electric Aircraft Corporation, electroflyer.com. If you go to Google and you put in electric aircraft or electric airplane, we're you're, you're going to come up by. Right. I've had the pleasure of looking at several of Randall's airplanes over the years. You can find more about that, more about the new ULS, it's called, on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us today.